Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, we are playing the top five win rate decks of August 2023. Did your favorite deck make it to the list this month? Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host for external use only, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Filmed before a live studio audience. Thank you so much, Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today once again from my secret underground headquarters. And it's top five win rate, win rate decks day for August of 2023. So for the last uh, few months since uh, December of 2022, I have been at the middle of the month on the 15th. I've been going out to untap GG and taking a look at their tiered list of best of one standard decks. And uh, I've been playing the Numbers one, two, three, four, and five. One of the reasons why I do that is because I hate playing those decks. I hate them. They are too good. They are just overplayed. It's just dumb. But I need to show them. I need to show them. So I play one deck, one game of each, and uh, we. This is my opportunity to play those decks and feel really badly about myself. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is checking out how the meta changes, how it shifts from month to month. You know what I found out? It doesn't really. Is that those decks have hold, held really steady for months now. Occasionally a deck just shoots out of out of nowhere, kind of like Naya Humans last month. Um, but typically things are pretty much staying right there in the top ranges. Not that much change. But anyways, if you are interested in what are the top win rate decks according to Untapped GG right now, then stay tuned because we're going to talk about, we're going to see examples of them. We're going to talk about a little bit and then uh, you'll be educated on what they are. All right, so without further ado, let's say our prayers, talk about what's best in life and take a look at number five. Dear Black King Toxroll, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentation of the women. And now, number five. All right, playing against Mesogla. Meslga. Masegla. Maselga. One, two, keep. Uh, I'd like a land. I'd like a land is what I'd like. I'll take this one. Gotta get this guy pumped up. Ah, we got so many Calyxes. What are we gonna do about that? Other than play the hell out of them. That's a guy. All right, all in. Spread the wealth.
All right, I think that's this is it for this deck at this point. I mean, we gotta go crazy. Uh, I don't know. That guy. That guy again. Give this another shot. And we win. That's all there is to it. Victory! No, that sucked. All right, at number five for this month, it's Lesnia Enchantments, because of course it is. Uh, you know, here's the deal. This is one of my most hated decks. I dislike it big time. Um, it's an Enchantress deck without an Enchantress in it. But uh, Kallax just totally ramped this thing up like crazy. I thought this deck was finally dying off a while back ago. But when Kallax came back, oh, it resurged. And it just went even nuttier than before. The The only card in this card, the deck, in this deck that I kind of like is Mitchko's Reign of Truth. I just think for being a stupid two mana, uh, you know, Saga card, Saga card, whatever I would pronounce that, the fact that if you got a bunch of other enchantments out, those things are pumped for like two turns in a row. And then Mitchko comes out as a, you know, as a super swole up, uh, you know, human noble there, I suppose. Also pumped based upon all the other enchantments you have out. So fantastic. You know, the one card that's not in here is Ossification. Most of these cards play Ossification. Oh, there it is, right there. Ossification's right there. As I say, I didn't you know, I didn't see it at the time I played it. I couldn't see it in there, but no, it was right there. Mishko was just hiding it from me there. Yeah, I hate Ossification right now. It's just being played so much, and uh, it's just too good for taking out Target Creature or Planeswalker. Man, it's, it's just too much. So what do I dislike about this deck so much? It is too perfect. Everything fits together so well. The synergy of the cards is fantastic. I mean, the, it's for an Enchantress deck. This deck is so good. So yeah, it deserves to be in the top five. I'm kind of pissed because it knocked Mono Red Aggro off the list. And man, I love Mono Red. I just, numbers one through four, you guys can suck it. But this deck... Welcome to the top five. We are playing against RTWO, R2. Okay, I'm good at that. R2. Keep, I guess. And there we go, Yodelin Frontliner. And our needy squeaky bats, you could just hang it up there. Ugh. Oh, uh, we're playing a soldier, right? All right, there we go. And nice Thalia. And for one. Chomp. Just gonna let it happen. Good for you, my friend. R2. R2, try to increase the power. There you go, Cubert. Here's some energon cubes for you. Am I particularly worried about this? Yeah, I am. Let's pull that thing down. Let's pull its pants down. And in. It's gotta be another, apparently. All right, down to 15.
No. Do it again. Yoink. All in. Yeah, finally, just let it go, man. Oh, he's okay. Good. He said, "I can't believe you're letting the frontliner do what the frontliner wants to do." That was a rough call. All right, the frontliner could be really, really cool if we get more of our dudes out. I wonder what he's got in his hand, man. He doesn't like any of it. Is that too expensive? Eh? He just doesn't care. All right, we're going to pound him out in preparation for the next turn. There we go. Next turn, we got an onslaught coming. Hopefully, he doesn't wipe the board. That would be horrendous at this point. I drew a card. Oh, I thought he gave plus ones to everything. That's still enough. Victory! All right, so here we are with number four this month, which is Azorius Soldiers. You know where it was last month? Number four. This thing has been holding rock steady in position. I guess the uh, only thing you could say about Azorius Soldiers is that it's not strong enough to take out numbers one, two, and three, who are also holding rock steady. Uh, so, Azorius Soldiers, what's good about them? Well, they've got, like, Azorius, but they got mono-white humans at their core. You got, like, Recruitment Officer, you got Thalia, you got Siege Veteran, Brutal Cathar, Valiant Veteran, all of that holding it together. That's what is really the top of the meta, and it's been so for, like, I don't know, eight, nine months now, is the mono-white human core. This one has a little bit of blue wrapped around it, so that you have some flying uh, what I really like about it is the Harbin, the Vanguard avi Aviator, Aviator, because of the fact that it's that it's got that giant splash at the end that can win a game. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control gain plus one, plus one, and flying till the end of the turn. Plus one, plus one is not bad, uh, especially if you're, you're attacking with at least five guys. That means you're doing an additional five points of damage. And being that you're, they've all got flying means more than likely they're not going to be able to block you. There's like almost nothing you could do. So assuming that you've got at least a 1-1, one, one, it means you're attacking for 10 points of flying damage with this guy. And he doesn't have to do anything other than just come into play. He's just a bomb you can play and attack with five other dudes. The game's over. So this deck has a certain amount of uh, panache to it. And it's Harbin Van Vanguard Aviator. He's cheap. He's awesome. He's multicolored. There you go, number four for this month. All right, we are playing against Stumpy Trumpy. <coughs> All right, that is horrible, horrible, horrible. And I'm keeping it.
All right, Thalia is good. And I am not going to charge for Skrelv. What are we playing? Humans? Human. All right. And nice Adeline. In we go. All right. Now we can just get to pump them up. All Lord like. White. Not so fast, Skrull. And we win! I didn't even see that coming. Victory! Alright, holding steady at uh, number three, Naya Humans. Yeah, if you remember last month, they rocketed up out of nowhere to, uh, to get to this position, but they've been holding steady. Number one to the king and queen of the win rates. Those guys are going to be hard to topple. So what is good about this one? Well, it's got that that super meta mono white humans as the core, which is like hopeful initiate, copper Girl vanguard, trepid adversary. I think this guy's a human knigget or something. Is that the right? Seaman scout, um, Dahlia, Adeline, brutal Cathar. All those guys are those mono white humans that pretty much every single one of the top four decks contains, right? Uh, but this one, being that it's Naya, the big thing about it is is Helena and Alana. And then it, because you know, you pass out, you give everybody haste and plus one plus one counters equal to their power. The thing is, we don't really have a way of pumping her up except for by like Intrepid Adversary. Um, Sigarda is a good choice as well because it's she's a human lord despite the fact that she's an angel. Plus you get to go looking for humans whenever you attack with three or more creatures. You know, Adeline gets to pump out a lot of dudes. The one creature I'm not sure about is is Malira. Uh, I, you know, sure, she helps out against toxic decks, I guess. But that seems like a like a big card. Like, what do you really do with it? Because it says, like, she's got that other thing where you can exile her to choose another target creature when it's put into a graveyard this turn, return that... Okay, I guess she has the ability to save, save some creatures, but... I thought she was like a bouncer specifically for artifacts, but we don't really have any artifacts in this deck, but creature or artifact, that makes a little bit more sense. All right, so anyways, I, she's something. I would replace her with pretty much anything else. It doesn't really matter that much. These two are what Naya is all about, stapled onto a mono-white human deck. All right, so does it hold up? Yeah. Is it pretty decent? Absolutely. Is it first or second place? Apparently not. Your third ranked deck for August of 2023, Nye Humans. All right, I'm playing against Cloudy. Cloudy. Two mana. That should be enough. More than enough. No. Unless we, until we get our third. No. What are you playing there, sucker? White. Oh, we're just mirror matching. Is that the deal? Take out your grower. And you lose. All right, down to 13. Need another mana, though. One more. He's just popping people. All attack. Down to six. 
Still, we can pin somebody down with the Cathar. I think we got this game. He's only got he's got about four mana total. He could put out. You know, his best thing would be to put out a swarm of guys. Fleshmonger, not gonna do it. I'll take that action. All in. Two, three, negative three. Monoway soldiers. Victory. Hold and steady at number two for yet another month. It's Mono White Soldiers. Uh, so Mono White Soldiers is such an incredible deck. It's been holding out steady for a long time in the top ranks. What is it that makes it this deck so good? It's got the Mono White Human Core. And uh, I mean, are the where's the humans here? Human Soldier, Human Soldier. You know, these are all human soldiers here. Human Soldier Werewolf, right? Uh, human Soldier, Human Soldier. And you got that tightness of being both human and soldiers that uh, allows this deck to just pump, 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 get in there, aggro fast, and just spread wide in ways that people normally can't keep up with. There's not a lot of creature removal, but this one does have it in the case of Brutal Cathar and Lay Down Arms. The thing I don't like about Lay Down Arms is the fact that you're giving your opponent free life to do it. And you're also limited in how big your creature can be based upon the number of uh, planes that you control. So I kind of find Laydown Arms to be extraordinarily limited. But it is cheap. It is way cheap. So, um, yeah, this deck is practically top shelf. The only thing about it is the fact that the, the next deck up doesn't limit itself to the soldier class. But I got to tell you, for the tribal perspective... This one is top shelf. Both being both... Well, okay, there. You are not a human. You are a core. So it just helps out the uh, this, this, this soldier part. I can say for being both human tribal and and soldier tribal at the same time, I got to give you double props. Because that core kind of gets in the way and so does the yodel and front, front liner right there. But anyways, it's all good. This deck is so, so choice. I would highly recommend you pick one up should you have the means. Number two, Mono White Soldiers. All right, we were playing against Thiago Joker. We we'll do three to keep. He's looking. <clears throat> Just got to be able to tap it. Who do you think you're shooting here? Scrolls is your only choice. Attacks. All right, now you can start killing stuff. All right, and in, down to 14. Guru Thar has, uh, has some words for you. There we go. I got two soundtracks playing at the same time. It's not cool, man. Down to six. Question, I think he has learned his lesson and knows to go after Skrull first. Nope. And we win! 
In your face. And here it is, number one for August of 2023, Mono White Humans. What was the number one deck last month? Mono White Humans. What was the number one deck the, the month before that? Mono White Humans. How about like six months before that? Mono White. I don't know. It probably was. Mono White Humans. Mono White Humans has been hardcore for quite a while now. And I wish that Standard was going to rotate. Except for the fact that I think the vast majority of the cards that are in this deck uh, are... Well, let's just take a look. I can say it wouldn't rotate normally. But this one would rotate. That one would rotate. Nope. Uh, yes. No. 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 Yes. So, eh, half the deck would rotate. That'd be interesting. But nope, we got these cards for at least another year. And I, I hope that when we get, um, what, you know, what is it? The Wilds of Whatever'sville. Uh, I keep thinking Idlewide. That's not the case. The next set that comes out, that we can find something that's going to bump Mono White Human from the top of the list. Uh, Mono White Human is, you know, the core of this deck, as well as the core of the next three decks in the list. This thing just uh, just rocks all the way across the board. Uh, you know, the one flavor that is on here that didn't make the list that I played last uh, a few weeks ago was Boros Humans. Boros Humans is incredible. That touches my inner goblin big time. I'd like to see Boros Human make the top five list. I have top five list. It hasn't made it there, though. Azorus Humans is still scraping the bottom there at number four and everything. Um, the big weird card is is Knight Errant of Eros. Eos. You know, you can invoke. Eh, great. You got a 4-4. Four, four. Uh -huh. And uh, when he enters the battlefield, you can reveal cards and then what? Put them into your hand and shuffle? I mean, it just doesn't feel like it's, like it's that big of a deal. I'm not sure why they like Knight Errand so much. Just because you could potentially get it out a little bit cheaper, a little bit faster. I don't know. It kind of feels like I'm looking for something else human-y that, that would be better at, at that. I mean, four, you got four things at five mana. I guess with the Convoke is supposed to help you get it out. We did play it. It did work. It was okay. I don't I don't personally like this card. But uh, what do I know? My decks aren't in the top five list. All right, so there we go. We've got Mono White Humans once again at number one. And here is your top five win rate decks for this month in order. Man, I just, I'm getting so sick of Mono White Humans. I mean, as you can see, it is the core of those top, the first four. The one thing I guess I like about Celestia Enchantments, despite the fact that I hate everything about Celestia Enchantments, is that it doesn't play Mono White Humans. Man, suck it, Mono White Humans. I mean, we just need a bunch of cards coming out that are just like, let's kill all white humans. That sounds like a great card. Maybe like like a whole suite of them. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. Uh, but this also means the death of Mono Red Aggro. <sighs> I, I got to pour one out for my homies because you deserve to be in the top five. I don't know how it's not at least the second on the list every month, but, you know, Numbers don't lie, and it says that it is not it. Where is it? It's number six. So it didn't fall too hard. It's just that that Celestia Enchantments has been stinking it up like a stink dog and fought its way into fifth position. All right, so there you go. Have a good month. We'll check back in a month from now to see if this thing has shooken up at all. Later. <laughs>